Well, here we are again, another week, Dan. We've made it another week. No one can stop us. No, no. I feel like it. We. I feel like that we're we're unstoppable now. Yeah, that's what no one can stop us means. Yeah. But thank you for defining my free because I know I never know what I'm talking about. So yeah, I just I appreciate you explaining it to the crowd what that means. I mean, I, like I feel like you talk at such a high level that I have to bring it down to us. You know, you call it peasants, or you could call it just us normal humans. Normies. 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 Is that a thing? Yeah, man. That's probably a thing, right? Um, so another week of the American Party podcast. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, somebody apparently wrote an article about us in uh, what is it? Heavy magazine. Heavy, Heavy? magazine uh, actually wrote wrote an article. I was, you know, I always get these pop ups of what, you know, if somebody wrote something and put my name in it. Yeah, and so, it's I like how it's uh, Bristol Palin's ex Dakota Meyer is running for president, not Medal of Honor recipient Dakota Meyer. Well, I mean, I don't know if you know this, but I'm not Dakota Meyer anymore. I'm Bristol, Bristol Palin's ex. ex. Yeah, yeah. I don't Medal of Honor recipient <clears throat> doesn't matter. So yeah, Heavy actually came out and talked about how mean you were going to run for president. Yeah, yeah, but they did. The I only mean, the only part that they got this messed up was um, they said that that we here we go. They messed it up. They said that I was voting for myself. So not true. Uh, I didn't, we're not voting. We're not voting for ourselves. We actually had somebody write us in. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we still do need to do our video for our acceptance of, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Of, you know, what we <clears throat> plan to do as president and vice president of, of the United States. Yeah. I think, uh, it's the more pe people are looking for something new, something different. I don't think they care where it comes from at this point. I mean, if you're a reasonably intelligent person, you're going to start looking outside of the traditional uh, political avenues for answers because you see that these people aren't even, not only do they not have it right, they're not even interested in getting the right answers. They're just interested in, in propagating their own fucking political power. So um, obviously people are looking around for something to do. There's these other parties, but I've talked to those guys. I've talked to uh, uh, Green Party folks. I've talked to, we actually had Spike Cohen from the Libertarian Party, the VP candidate for them on the show. And look, they're nice people. And they, they definitely are uh, a bellwether for the frustration of the average American when it comes to the political spectrum. But it's, it's those ideas have not been thought out very well, in my opinion. You know yeah, I, mean? I, just, I just feel like that they are just saying what they feel like Americans want to hear. Probably, yeah. And they're capitalizing on that. I think what's, what's interesting about what we're doing here with the American Party is that it's not necessarily a political party. It's more like we, I have more questions than answers. Yeah. And I think that's an important thing that a, any, not that we're politicians, but anybody that works in politics or in the sphere of politics, even if it's media, you should always have more questions than answers. Because if you don't, if we're not in a spot where we're 80% of the way there, and I don't think we are, and you have more answers than questions, and you're probably fucked up, right? Yeah. Because if you had all those answers, then they would be working. I mean, They're I not. just I I I want to have discussions with people. Like I feel like all the politicians that are out there now, the people who are representing us, they're doing nothing more than trying to tell us how we should feel, telling us what our problems right. are, and trying instead of asking us what we need and what we think, they're just telling us how we should think, and they're telling us how we should feel, and they're telling us what our problems are, and they have no clue as to what reality truly is anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's this is this is actually it's been an interesting week for that because uh, fans of uh, Drink It Bros or people after you watch a couple of uh, episodes of this, you'll note that I'm not a Republican. I'm certainly not a Trump supporter necessarily. I support what works, yeah. um, but you know, credit where credit's due. Even Ice Cube, the rapper, actor, mogul, whatever you want to call him, he's had a problematic past with some anti-semitism and shit like that but he has been a guy that's not been afraid to say what's on his mind even if it's wrong which i think is a good thing these days uh and people have been asking him lately over the last couple of weeks what he meant when he said that he had uh some role in helping trump clarify or uh, uh develop the quote-unquote uh what is it platinum platinum plan or whatever the fuck it is yeah platinum plan um which is you know a 500 billion dollars investment into 
uh, infrastructure in the black community. When I say infrastructure, education and entrepreneurship, which is something that I've been talking about for years now, the only color that matters in this country is green. green I mean, get, that's what liberty in this country is all about. Give people their, the ability to make their own way because the more they make their own way, they may, the more they control their own lives. You know what I mean? Every dollar you take from somebody else is a little bit of fucking you that you have to give away. It's a little bit of your decision power that you have to give away to somebody else. The more you can make for yourself, the better you're going to be. Now, what he said was, uh, he, he's talking about this contract with Black America that, that he and some others proposed. He said both parties reached out to him and contacted him, obviously, because he's a major celebrity. And he said the Democrats said, we'll address this after the election and Trump actually brought him to the White House and had him work with his staff to talk about the black community and what would actually help now one of those things is clearly better than the other yeah. in my opinion uh, I know as a white fucking former military dude that lives in Texas that likes guns and shit the presumption is that I'm going to always fall on the side of conservatism but that's not necessarily true this is just a clear-cut case of one side doing a better job of listening than the other side did. Yeah, I'm, frankly, I mean, they, I think they, uh, they completely retooled their plan yeah. based on what this guy and a couple other people that actually grew up, like he grew up in Compton. Say what you want about how long he's been rich, but this motherfucker grew up in Compton. Yeah, it's not a knows. great place to live. He knows, and the other guys that were involved in that, and the other women that were involved in that, they know as well more than I ever will, or you ever will, or it's certainly more than Trump or anybody on his staff ever For will. Sure. Right? But that's the thing. You don't always know. You have to rely on people that have firsthand experience sometimes. And the inability to do that is something that I talk about a lot. Now, the Democratic Party has systematically over the last 50 or so years used welfare and other government fucking support to keep black people on the tit. They've done nothing. And I say this kind of in jest, but at least Republicans had the good at least they had the common decency to ignore the problem and not make it worse. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know that's fucked up. Neither one of those answers is right. But, man, I, I, I just don't understand. He, he talked about that in a video I think he put out today on Instagram. Um, he's discussing how don't just listen to these celebrities telling you to go out and vote. Right? Yeah. Vote, vote. Why, why just vote? Why just vote? You why? should expect something with your vote. Yeah. I right? Mean, I mean, you, you should, should expect your, if your community is not being taken care of, you should not vote for any of these people that are saying they're going to take care of it. And if yeah. they had the opportunity, for example, Biden's had 47 years to take care of this. And what's the result been for the black community, the crime bill? That's what the result's been. So, you know, I think he's right on that. I don't, I don't necessarily think you should drop out of, of, you know, politics altogether if you're a citizen of this country, particularly one that needs to be more represented in public. But I understand the impetus uh, that he's talking about, like there should be some reason to vote. So what are you trying to accomplish with your vote? And how are you holding the people you're voting for accountable by doing that? There's an well, old saying in democratic politics that uh, particularly up and coming black politicians will say in democratic politics, it is that these politicians will show up every 18 months when there's an election to be had and then you don't see them again until the next election. You don't see them or their money or their influence until it's time to vote again. And that's been a big problem for them. And now I'm kind of curious, like, where is this going to go? Because you see more and more of these black leaders getting frustrated, like community leaders getting frustrated well, with how it's been going. Well, you know, what's, you know what's pretty interesting to me is is that, you know, usually Jesse Jackson, right? Usually these guys are, are hot and heavy right now. Mm -hmm. Man, I, I haven't heard a peep out of them. The last nobody thing, wants to hear that shit right now, right? But I mean, but you take with all these riots. I mean, you think they'd be capitalizing on this? Al Sharpton, like you think they yeah. would be absolutely capitalizing on this? And the last thing I've heard, I think who, who was it that said that said that you know this is not what they want either against the cops. Uh, I don't know. Was it Al Sharpton? Uh, was it? Maybe I don't know. Yeah, but 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 either <clears> way, like I don't know, man. I think I think people are getting so fed up with the bullshit. That, that, you know, I think that's what we're going to do here with, you know, that's what my, I know, I think that's why we're on the same page is mm -hmm. like, it's not about being, it's, it's not about being, you know, is it best for Republicans or is this best? Are these decisions based on this country best for Republicans or best for Democrats? It's about, are, is it best for the American people? Right. right? Is this, a, is this, is this like, like the only thing that we have to hold loyalty to is not a party. 
yeah. is not a is not a an idea of what a party thinks is best for the country, but is what is absolutely the best decision for the country right. at that time to get put it in the best position, right? The only loyalty that the American Party has to have is to America and Americans. Right. Yeah. Right? I mean, the, look, it's there's a, there's a lot of things involved there. I mean, you're talking about reworking the way an entire political system works. Obviously, that's not easy, but there's small things that you can do on uh, a daily basis that accomplishes that. And one of them is, I think one of the biggest ones is tax reform right now. And when I say tax reform, I mean particularly at the federal level because as a taxpaying person myself, right, and kind of alluding to what Ice Cube was talking about with uh, you know using your vote – using the power of your vote, not just the vote itself. Yeah. Uh, I think taxes should be paid at the lowest possible level that they can be paid. Sit like municipal, state, then federal, right? Because <clears throat> the more percentage of my taxes I spend at the lower level, the more influence I have with my dollars for to like, if, if I, if let's say I pay, Ten, fifteen thousand dollars, or fifty thousand, whatever it is, a year, in federal taxes, right? Yeah. Like I have no say over how any of that money spent. Nope. Zero, one hundred percent of zero fucking percent is how much say I have in that. Now it's a state level, a little bit more, maybe ten percent, right? If it's at the city level, it's way more. It's like forty percent, maybe. And you're, what you're doing is you're turning your money into, uh, you're 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 spending your money to make the world the way you want, and that's how it should be, right? But so what I mean, so so. <laughs> But I think like you should reverse the taxes, so your state tax should be higher than your federal tax. Like yeah, for why, sure, like, yeah. like why, why would you not be investing in your state more than the federal <clears throat> government, right? Like, yeah. like you should be investing in the state that you live in, in the in your own towns, in your own communities, right. more than you should other communities. Because, like, I mean, what's the percentage of these bigger states that take of uh, the federal tax money? Uh, a lot of them, yeah. I mean, it, it used to be for a long time that Texas was the piggy bank for every other state. Well, think about this, right? Like, and it still kind of is. Like, there's only there's not a whole. I think there's there's welfare states, right, that take more money than they give. Yep. Uh, and then there's uh, states like Texas that usually pay 1.4 x what they take in in federal revenue, right? So, yeah, it's it's definitely important and and. To be honest, Texas has accomplished that without any income tax. They still have been America's piggy bank for a very long time. Here you go. Here you go. The 10 states with the highest total fed. So, so think about this. If your money, so you pay, let's say, let's say you, ta- you max out in the bracket and you're paying mm-hmm. 35% federal tax. Right. Right. So California takes the most um, highest federal funding. 10 states with the highest total federal funding are California, but Texas is right there with them. Yep. So West Virginia, so here are 10 states with the most federal funding per resident. Mm. West Virginia, 7,283, 7,283 per person, per resident of West Virginia. Alaska, Mississippi, Alabama, Maryland, Maine, Hawaii. This is crazy, man. This is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can see um, <clears throat> the states that are the most dependent are New Mexico, Kentucky, Mississippi, West Virginia, Montana, Alaska, uh, South Carolina. States that, you know, like West Virginia is a good example. Uh, coal mining is going away, right? Yep. Their industry is getting upset. Uh, Poorest, like, I don't even know what happens in New Mexico, to be honest. But But that's where, like, this no child left behind. That's where, like, this school funding stuff. Like, this is where we start dropping everything is whenever a state buys into this federal project. Mm -hmm. And then guess what? The federal, federal, federally regulates how the state i mean they they really come in and they have the state by the balls, right? Yeah. I think if we reverse that, like, you incentivize the state to run, I mean, to, I mean, you, you start having these welfare states, exactly yeah. right. Like these states are, I mean, you look like you like you look right here. You're saying, I mean, you all of them, and you go down. Texas, where's Texas at? Texas uh, is is one of the lowest. Yeah, the yeah. lowest is Connecticut, New Jersey. They're called donor states, uh, and hi- just historically, they've given way more in federal tax than they take in federal revenue or taken federal uh, dollars for whatever it is, right? 
And that can be a misnomer sometimes because some of the bigger states, like Texas is one of them, California is one of them. So their numbers are probably a little bit better than what they really are. But um, they have these big, they have like nuclear facilities and just stuff that has to be like military bases. They have to be governed in some way by the federal government. Yeah. There's nothing you can really do about it. Um, but the vast majority of states get more money back from the federal government than they pay out. Only, uh, only 10 at this point give more than they receive and uh they're mostly northeastern places because they just don't they don't have those facilities right like they're, they have state-run facilities up there for the most part and there's a, a, a myriad of other reasons but i mean the um, state should be able to last on their own they should be able to survive on their own <clears throat> if you want that state right i mean the state should be required to be able to perform on its own to have its own i mean do, do you not agree well i mean look there's no uh I don't think even federally we're required to have a balanced budget, right? And there's some states that are trying to pass amendments, statewide amendments, where it's required every year they have a balanced budget. Now, that's kind of stupid, in my opinion, because, and here's why. So everybody talks about debt, and I'm more worried about deficit than debt. Like, a deficit is how much more we spent per year than we anticipated spending. It yeah. doesn't necessarily mean we spent more than what we had. It means we spent more than what we anticipated spending. Now, that accrues over time and becomes the national debt, which is clearly out of control right now. But you have to ask yourself, uh, what is the GDP in America right now? Um, I think it's uh, 27, no, it's 21 trillion, right? 21 trillion and the, I mean, how, uh, do, how do we how do we how do we pay that off well that's that, that's that's our gdp that's how much money we're generating per year and then our our debt What's, what is the debt what is our the debt? debt is 26.7 trillion right so it's more uh but this is the way i think of it and th there's got to be a plan right you can't just go on spending like that forever but if you, let's say you make three hundred thousand dollars a year usually you would like one of the basic rules is you spend about three times or 30 Thirty percent of your uh, or three x what your annual salary is on a house, right? So if you make three hundred thousand dollars a year, you should get a nine hundred thousand dollars house, give or take, right? It's not it's not a hard and fast rule, but that's one rule that some people a lot of people go by. So if we're talking about that, if we're investing in things like infrastructure, this debt doesn't bother me. But we're not. We're spending it on fucking bailouts. We're spending it on endless goddamn wars yep. that we're never going to get any money back None from that. As a matter of fact, all we're doing is creating more issues that we have to pay off in the end. This is not, um, this is not a, a liberal versus conservative issue. It's math. You know what I mean? It's, it's just math. You can't keep borrowing money if Here you... Here you go. You know what's crazy is? Looking at this. So the U.S. population right now is uh, 330 million. Mm -hmm. You know how many people pay taxes? Um, 124 million. That's about right, yeah. I mean, only 180 million people are adults. So that's a big chunk of it right there. How many people? I got it right here. This, this, don't uh, pay go taxes. to usdebtclock.org. It tells you everything. This is pretty crazy. I've never seen this until right now. 47% of people don't pay taxes basically is what this is saying Times so we have right now we have 55 80. million retirees yep nine thousand nine million disabled medicare enrollees are 60 million there's 18 million u.s millionaires we have 44 million food stamp recipients mm -hmm. <clears throat> Medicaid recipients is uh, 80 million. We have 852,000 U.S. bankruptcies, 358,000 foreclosures. We have, here's what's crazy, man. We have 35 million people living in poverty. Yeah, in the richest, in quote the unquote, richest, richest country, country in the history of the world. The as we, the planet. we like to say that all the time. We're the richest country ever, but we can't seem to figure this part out. And it's because... What I said before, I mean, one of the political parties doesn't want to admit it's true because they know they have to do something about it if they admit it's true. The other political party wants to leverage it to continue getting elected while doing absolutely nothing to solve the problem. Both of these positions are at very least amoral, right? If not 
like just outright unethical. I think they're unethical. That's why I don't trust any of these motherfuckers, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> and it kind of goes back to uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about today, which is nationalism and populism. Nationalism has a bad uh, connotation to it because there's this thought that somehow trying to make your country the best is going to come at the expense of other countries. I don't necessarily think that's true. Like you in the military, you're often taught and even, you know, as a child in boy scouts or whatever the fuck else, you don't leave things the way you found them. You leave them better than the way you found them. Absolutely. You're, you, you have to be better than everybody else. Not that you want to take fucking pride in that or wear a badge that says I'm better than everybody else. But your job as a conscious human being is to raise the bar for everybody else, hold other people accountable, including yourself, right? Absolutely. And once you enter into the public, uh, uh, or for into the public life like that, holding other people accountable, that naturally holds you accountable as well. You can't get away with fucking doing the wrong thing anymore. You see a piece of garbage on the ground, you better fucking pick it up. Because if somebody catches you on a fucking iPhone, not walking by a pile of garbage after you talked about picking it up, this is just a... A, a rudimentary example, obviously, but if somebody yeah, sees something like that, it makes you look like a hypocrite. But it's but 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 doing that is not like you don't get to pick and choose. It's either it's 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 a habit. It's a way of life, yeah. right? You not walking by a piece of trash is is it like all those things are. It becomes habitual. Yeah, it to does. where it becomes a way of life, and then yeah. I mean, because you can't pick and choose where you're going to be a good. You're either going to be a good person right. or you're not going to be a good. I mean, person. it's like uh, it's like diet. Like going on rapid fad diets will never work. Never last. It I mean, just look doesn't. At me, it, it doesn't. It doesn't work that way. You have to. It's a lifestyle thing. Derek White talks about it all the time. Like people always ask him, like, "What do you do for your cheat meals?" And he goes, "Well, I don't cheat on my wife, so why would I cheat on my diet?" You know what I mean? I think that's an extreme example because I I will probably eat a whole pizza tonight. I don't give a shit. You but think so? No, I don't. I, I really don't eat pizza that much. But uh, it, it's it's a good point he's making. And with regard to the nationalism thing. It aren't, isn't it incumbent upon us to make ourselves and our country the best it can possibly be? Not only because that's the right thing to do, but also because how the fuck am I going to help somebody else? Like, uh, how, yeah. can, how can I fucking, how can I help you it's if like my I, house is on I, fire? I, I call it the mean? boat analogy. Hmm? Like, if your boat has holes in it and it's yeah. not moving, it, like how, how do you help somebody swim? How do you even rescue somebody and help them? Yeah. So my question to you is, where are the elections at right now, right? Like we are 19 days. We are actually 19 days, 7 hours, 31 minutes, and 36 seconds from from the election. It's very precise. It's exact. So what, um, what, do, you, what do you think? What's your, what's your prediction on this right now? Um, I think it's going to be uh, a close election, but I... You do? Yeah. I mean, I, I just think the polling that's out right now is absolutely ludicrous. Yeah, I mean, because it's like, Everything I'm looking at the ludicrous. Guardian right now. The Guardian has Biden ahead 51.8%, Trump at 41.2%. That's nonsense. It's nonsense. There's yeah. no way. No, no way. But I, what I think Biden will probably win the popular vote by 2.3%, give or take, something like that. Uh, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Uh, but... I think uh, Trump probably wins somewhere around 310, 312 electoral votes just because the unrest in these cities, the Democratic governors are in, in these swing states are wildly unpopular because of the bullshit they've been pulling over the last year. You know, the more and more uh, evidence that comes out with regard to the actual lethality of COVID for different age groups and realizing that there was a better plan that quarantining the people that were actually at risk would have made a lot more sense yep. and that there's a 99.97 survivability rate. I mean, it's people are fucking angry about that as well. They should be because something like 400,000 businesses have gone under and 60 plus percent of those are never going to reopen. Well, here's what, here's what's kind of interesting. That's I'm 24 or 240,000 private businesses owned in the United States, a quarter million owned by private individuals that They've, their life savings are gone now. Yeah, all that's hard work and money they put into that business. But I think the only way the country gone. opens back up is if a Democrat gets elected. Maybe I mean it depends on what happens at the governor level, but we see now that. Uh, I mean, I think I think I think I think what you see is is so so. Here, here's one thing I want to throw out. I mean, it's right in the now. courts too, right? Like a, a federal court in Pennsylvania ruled that shutting down businesses is unconstitutional. You can't do it. And the Supreme Court in, in uh, Michigan told Governor Whitmer to get fucked. Basically, same thing. So, so here's what I, I want to throw out right now. So I'm looking at um, I'm looking at a site right now that's comparing p 
polls, uh, 2020 polls to 2016 polls, right, 20 yeah. days out, right? Yeah. So at, right now, at 20 days out, they got Biden winning 9.2. He's up by 9.2, right? Right. 20 days out, last election, they had Clinton up by 6.2. Yeah. Right? Do you so, think things are more or less partisan today than they were I, three year, or four I, years ago? Exactly, Come on, man. Exactly. This is ridiculous. So, um, so I'm with you. So here's my prediction is. My prediction is that if a Democrat, like if Biden wins, um, the country opens back up rapidly. Uh, the economy, op- because they have to try to, to, to boost this economy. Right? I, but I think if Trump wins, that you're still going to see a slow roll in this beatdown of trying to slow roll the, the, the economy back open, right? Well, I mean, look, there's, Trump doesn't have a whole lot of constitutional authority with regard to opening up states, right? That's why the 10th Amendment exists. Anything that doesn't fall under the purview of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights pretty much goes down to the states. There have been exceptions that pass their way through the courts. Now, what Trump can do is these cases that have been elevated to the national level now, this case in Pennsylvania that says uh, that was in a federal district court that will go to an appeals court, and then it'll go to uh, the Supreme Court if that's necessary. Uh, and we see what's going to happen with the Supreme Court. If Trump does win re-election, it'll take three or four months to reopen shit for the time it takes to get this stuff through the, co- the courts. But it'll reopen for sure. Like, they can't stop it at that point. Yeah, but, uh, but, I'm, but I'm telling you, I think, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to take... Uh, but I think if guaranteed it opens back up mm. if Biden gets elected. It has he, to, he yeah. Has the, to. The, the, we talked about it. Yeah. I, I don't know if it was last episode or the La- one before, but the first 100 days uh, yeah. is super important for any president starting out, particularly a guy that's probably going to be passing the torch. I, I doubt... If Biden were to get elected, which I think is unlikely, I doubt I he would unlikely. last more than one term because he's old as fuck. Yeah. Right. Uh, and he's already like in severe mental decline. I, I don't think any r- reasonable person could could uh, challenge that at this point. I think Biden's got some real problems. <clears throat> like since we're talking about Biden. Yeah. I mean, his son, his son will be the Achilles heel for him. I right? mean, there's always one asshole in the group. So Obama's dad is like a Trump supporter, apparently. And he's every everybody's got that one asshole member of their family that they're just like, God damn it, dude. Yeah, it was we, Ro- Do you remember Roger Clinton? Who? Bill Clinton's brother. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was a total shit show. Um uh he's he's an actor apparently, uh. Um but he, he's uh he was a shit show. Uh in the Bush family, obviously it was George W. Bush, uh who still managed to be get <laughs> elected president somehow twice. Shit. Uh but he was the fucking wild child in that group, which is really funny, by the way. But uh, every family's got one. This one's a little bit different, though. It's different when you're actually complicit in the shit that's going on. Now, Biden has said repeatedly that he's never fucking had any kind of direct communication with one of these people. Now we see that... Uh, that's not the case. The third in command over there at that oil company, Hunter Biden uh, Burismo, that he was working for, they Hunter set up a face-to-face meeting. Yeah, in D.C. In D.C. with Joe Biden. And then he had this, what we see, this new letter that came out is the uh, thank you letter for that. And uh, the, the, what Biden said was, quote, ne- I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings, uh, which is obviously a lie. It's either a lie or he can't remember it. Uh, in addition, the leaked materials include a 12-minute video that shows Hunter smoking crack and, and banging some unidentified woman. Um and the list goes on and on with this stuff. There's all kinds of weird shit going on here. But basically, I mean, Biden bragged about getting the, uh, the prosecutor, Victor Shokin, fired, right? Uh, and that prosecutor was the guy that was looking into Burisma. And there is another email in this list that shows this third in command guy, Burisma, asking Hunter Biden how he might be able to leverage his political contacts to make this go away, essentially, right? And then... Biden's on stage. This is Joe Biden on, is on stage. And he says, I looked at them and said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money, meaning the billion dollars in foreign aid. So basically, Joe Biden, the guy that's running for vice president right now, because his son asked him to on behalf of his company, threatened to withhold a billion dollars to uh, Ukraine if they didn't fire a prosecutor that was looking into his son's company. That is exactly what happened. All the evidence is here now. Uh, And then the quote from Biden is, well, son of a bitch, he got fired. So here's the deal, man. I don't know that that's even illegal, technically. I don't know that it is either, but I mean, you sit and you look at, I mean, didn't they just go down a huge investigation of Trump holding money back? Didn't they just go, I mean, you you know what I'm saying? Like, Like this Russia probe, like this right here, 
if Biden gets elected, the Republicans, this will be four years of, of a shit show investigation. Yeah, they'll never get. I mean, look, here's if if Biden does get elected and they don't flip the Senate, then it's going to be a problem. As a matter of fact, even if they do flip the Senate, they're going to have to enact a nuclear option, which means the end of cloture voting. So there won't be any 60 votes to get stuff on, onto the floor anymore. They'll go to they'll go nuclear option. Everything will be an up down vote. And that's something that's been talked about ever since the first Bush administration. Yeah. And uh, everybody's been very wary of doing it. Both as, as partisan as things have gotten over the last 20 years, everybody's been very wary of doing that. Uh, and it looks like it's a real possibility now. And the fact that Biden wouldn't answer the question of about pork court packing, right? Like they straight explain, up ask. Explain, explain to the people, because I had to research <clears throat> this, but explain exactly what court packing means. Well, I, I mean, I, historically it, it's meant uh, trying to leverage your position in the White House and Senate to get as many of your party members elected, or not elected, but nominated and confirmed to the SCOTUS as possible. Now it means something different. Now it means trying to get D.C. and Puerto Rico turned into states, so there's four more senators, so you can flip that part of it. And it also means adding four new members to the Supreme Court, which they also proposed. Uh, so it would go from nine to 13. Now this is not unprecedented. It happened yeah. in the 1860s, I think the last time or some shit like that. Uh, and, uh, they, they expanded the court and then shrank it back to nine that long ago. And it stayed like that forever. Um, it's a K here's, here's the deal, dude. Uh, when you're losing the game and you start trying to change the rules, that's the wrong answer. If you're losing, change your fucking behavior yeah. until you win. That's how you win. You don't change the fucking rules of the game. We've all had that experience where the guy's like, uh-uh, uh-uh, man. You didn't, no, nah, we talked about nah, this. We, no, uh, yeah. I thought this. Like, yeah, no, dude, no. We, everybody knew the fucking rules. Everybody knew the rules. You knew when, when you ran for office, you lost, and now yeah. these are the consequences of losing that election. And I would have said the same thing, by the way, and I did quite frequently to all the Republicans trying to repeal the Affordable Care Act all those years. I'm not saying it wasn't the right I'm not saying it wasn't right necessarily to repeal the Affordable Care Act. What I'm saying is they knew they didn't have the votes and they wasted everybody's time and didn't vote on anything else. It's about the American people. And I don't know if you saw this um, this week, earlier this week, but Pelosi's on Wolf Blitzer's show, right? And he's asking her like, hey, Trump made a pretty good offer. And people yeah, why need, didn't you accept it? People need money. Why didn't you accept it? And she goes, I don't know why you're being such an apologist for the Republican Party. Yeah, because Wolf Blitzer and CNN, definitely known for being apologists for the Republican Party. You out of your fucking mind? Yeah. Like, how far left do you have to be where you look at CNN's behavior and you think that is Republican? Because you know what, man? Like, th that's, that's how wild. You, that's how you know you've lost. Yeah. Right? So, like, like when I look at you and I say, it's kind of like a veteran when they say, well, you don't know what it's like. You haven't been there. You weren't in a gunfight. You don't know what it's like to watch your friends die. Like that's immediately means that they have lost the argument. Yeah. They have nothing else to say and they know they're wrong, right? Like it's, it's moving a the goalposts at that point. It's yeah. moving. I mean, the, it's called chasing ghosts. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's why we can't, it's, it's one of the reasons we're doing what we're doing here because that level of just, um, I don't know if it's a, it's probably some combination of cognitive dissonance and just being disingenuous as a person. Um, but the inability to admit that your ideas have failed yes, and move on to new ideas. I mean, imagine American politics, but shifted onto the platform of like a game, right? Yep. Let's say it's a, the most rudimentary game you play as a child. You have three different shapes and there's three different holes in a piece of wood, right? The Democrats over the last 50 years have been trying to put a square peg in a round hole does not work. And now they're blaming the other two holes and the other two pegs for that not working. That is not how fucking life works, my man. The Republicans do the same, though. They do absolutely the they, same. Like, if this absolutely, thing flips, yeah. we're going to see the same shit from the yeah, Republican no side. No question about that. And, like, and, 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 and the thing is, my, my problem with all this is, is that there's none of these issues that should be politically, like, you should have no political agenda, right? You should have no party agenda. And the thing is, is these issues, the biggest issues in America mm. right now are not that hard. Mm. Yeah, they're, they're hard so to either. figure out, but they're not hard to do. It's not a hard, like, like the decision, making the right decision is not a hard thing to do based on the big issues that America has right now. You know what I mean? We're not yeah, talking yeah. about complicated issues. No. We're talking about real yeah. issues affecting real people mm -hmm. That could be made, but it's like everybody <clears throat> like like the reason that these decisions can't be made and they get so complicated is because how do I do something that's that's right for the people 
mm. but also helps me out right right like that's where <clears throat> this stuff's getting complicated right and it's let's let's be really upfront about all this the group most to blame is the american people for this absolutely we've absolutely brought this on ourselves by listening to people who lie to us by trusting them by not confirming there's an old saying from the end of the cold war it was the uh, reagan era rollback era of the cold war and it was trust but verify like yeah we're going to start working with these people but we're absolutely still going to have spies on the ground verifying what they're saying to us and that's exactly what every single voter should do do not believe yeah the shit you see in here every day, go out and find out for yourself. And if you can't find out for yourself, withhold your money and withhold your vote somehow. Yeah. Like, and you can't... Hold people to the table. I, I'm, not, I'm, not saying you, I'm not saying not to vote. What I'm saying is start showing up at these meetings and ask people very pointed questions and, ha- and record it. Put it on Instagram because you have power now. Social media is power. Social Things can go viral. Power. And you have the ability to do that shit now. So all these things, it, it's so funny to me it's, it's wild. This is one of the wildest things about the last 15 years to me is that the uh, Democratic Party still lean on the Affordable Care Act like it's some beautiful piece of light, like it's Social Security, like it's a new deal or something like that. Like, are you fucking kidding me? This is the biggest piece of shit bill in modern American history. Absolutely. It's, it's the second worst. The worst one was uh, the bill to create the Department of Homeland Security. That should never have happened. As a matter of fact, just to point it out, guys, if you're listening out there, the largest expansion of the federal government in U.S. history happened under a Republican's watch. There you go. And with all the Republican votes, 100% of them. So <clears throat> the Affordable Care Act is a handout to insurance companies and to big pharma, period. That's all it is. It's nonsense. There is, we've never had a real conversation in this country about health care. What we talk about is health insurance. Right? Those are not the same thing. Healthcare is going to a hospital, being seen for what you need, getting the drugs you need at a reasonable cost, yeah. and going home and, and being able to live your life again, getting access to preventative care because it's not only cheaper, right? But it, it keeps you out of the actual hospital moving forward. Do you know that 83% of all bankruptcies filed by private individuals in this country happen because of unpaid medical bills? 83%. If 83% of anything else was contributing to something, we would say that is immediately the problem right? But it's not, right? The problem is that, oh, we just don't have enough of this, or we don't have enough of that. We have plenty. We have plenty of money. We just keep throwing it into incinerators all the time. We keep spending it on bullshit all the time. That's our real fucking problem. These, uh, this, the Affordable Care Act said that premiums would go down. They did not. They said you'd be able to keep your own doctor. That was a lie. They said they would bring the cost of medication and treatment down that is not true either as a matter of fact if you look this up and i encourage you to do so there's a million places you can do it open secrets is one of them uh if you want to find out who takes the most amount of money from the big pharmaceutical industry uh out of any american politician ever i don't think you would be surprised to find out that it's hillary clinton she t- she's taking more money from big pharma than anybody else ever really? and if you remember yes in the mid 90s there's two things that hillary clinton was doing one was promoting the crime bill calling black kids super predators everybody seems to have forgotten about that the other thing she was doing was talking about universal health care that whole time she's the one she's the architect of the affordable care act and yeah. she takes more money from the big pharmaceutical industry ever so the biggest health care bill in the history of this country happens and it's got nothing holding their feet to the fire it's still $29 for a fucking aspirin in a hospital. It's still pretty much legal for any drug company to charge whatever the fuck they want for a drug. That's a public utility at that point. That's crazy. You can't do that anymore. It's it is insane. amoral. And to be honest, those people should be in jail, but they're not. So we, again, I'll go back to this. We've never had a real honest discussion about healthcare because healthcare itself, something like 80% of healthcare costs, what we consider healthcare, are administrative fees, insurance fees, and overpriced uh, pharmaceuticals. We can afford to give our entire country really good healthcare if we just get rid of this bullshit. Yeah, I mean, but nobody could, wants to. Yeah, I mean, this is crazy. Like, I'm sitting here looking at this right now. Um, like, it, it it's crazy. Like, what? when I'm sitting here looking at, at these, these costs, like an aspirin is 30 bucks, Mm -hmm. $30 in a hospital, Yep, $30 for an aspirin. 
Like it's it's just like like it's crazy. And I think when if people start holding, like if people start looking in this and just stop going along with it, here you go. Here you go. A uh, Tylenol in the hospital is fifteen dollars. A box of tissues in the hospital is eight bucks. A plastic bag is eight dollars. Gloves for a hospital, fifty three dollars. Every time a doctor or nurse has to put them on. So he, keep here you go. Every so. <laughs> Every so fifty three dollars every time a doctor or nurse puts on a set of gloves fifty three dollars. Yeah, basically what we have are a bunch of asshole politicians. They're trying to dump a ten gallon water drum into a five gallon bucket. They're spilling ninety percent of it and then saying we don't have enough to fill that bucket. Here, here You're you a fucking liar. Twenty dollars for them to check your blood pressure, <sighs> and you don't get to keep the cuff. Aren't those people on salary already? Why does it cost more for them to do this? Look at this. Holding your newborn child, $39. That's probably worth it. Sterile water IV bag. Holy shit. You ready for this? Those things are, they cost about $3. $800 is what they charge you in a hospital. If you go buy them at a medical supply store right down the street, it'll cost you about 12 bucks. So they said right here, the manufacturing cost on a sterile IV bag Mm. Is one dollar? Yeah, it's, they sell them for in bulk. If you buy them in bulk, they're about three bucks. If you buy one from a local medical supply store, it's going to be about twelve to twenty-five bucks, depending on what's the quality of the bag and shit like that. But yeah, that's not surprising to me. And this is what I'm talking about. We have this big, we have ten gallons of water, and we're trying to fill up this five-gallon bucket, and they're spilling ninety, eighty to ninety percent of it on the ground, and then telling us there's not enough water to fill up that five-gallon bucket. So we have to make sacrifices. That is fucking bullshit, Insane. dude. Insane. Here you go. Here you go. If a nurse has to hand you, like, medicine, mm. $90. For what exactly? <laughs> what, what is that for? Bro, bro, this is nuts. This is nuts. But this is why you don't let the government run so much. This is why no. states need to come in. And states, like, like, I believe that, I mean, you look at, you look at this cost of, like, training. Like, I look at, like, like contracting mm-hmm. to the government how much that costs like anything anything costs more when the government has to do it why don't we create competition why don't they outsource this and just oversee it instead yeah. of <clears throat> instead of bringing it in have to go through all their red tape bullshit i don't have a problem at all with the government setting the rules because yeah. we can we can affect change at that level but once it becomes something like the va Look at how hard it is to change the Veterans Affairs Administration. Look at yeah. how hard it is to make any change, incremental or long-term change, in that fucked up organization. I know there are a lot of good, hard-working people that work for that organization. The VA has a lot of good people working in it, a, but a the bunch. VA as a whole yeah, sucks. Yeah, it's fucked, man. I'll give you a perfect example right here. So here's what they've done to me, and I'm, I'm fighting this battle as we speak. So I got divorced two years ago. So I had to take off my ex-wife, mm-hmm. and I had to take off my... Um, sorry about that. I had to take off my ex-wife and I had to take off, um, I had to take off my ex-wife and a step, a stepchild, right? Right. I've attempted this at least five times. Can't get a hold of anybody. So then every time I call and I get on the phone, they're like, well, you have to go to a manager. You have to go to a manager. Mm-hmm. And then they tell me a manager will call me back. <sighs> Not one person has called me back in two years, right? Yeah. I finally figured out why. The VA, because I'm a Medal of Honor recipient and because um, I had a high profile marriage, mm. they restricted, they put my access as to a restricted claim. So it's a restricted file, like the highest restriction you can make inside the VA. Mm. So it takes the <clears throat> highest, like, it's like having the TS clearance yeah. to be able to get into my file, right? That's so stupid. So what it's done is, so now I finally found that out. Nobody told me until a week ago. Mm. I finally found that out. You know what the VA is doing to me? Sending me a bill because they overpaid me for two years. So now I get the bill to have to pay oh, yeah. them back. Yeah, if you need money from the government, it'll take you a minute to get it. But if they want it back from you, they're going to take it that day probably. Insane. I mean, they'll do it without your permission too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's insane the way all that stuff works. But I think there's a reasonable way to go about this. I mean, just think about regular basic business economics. If you're making 
if your cost of goods is low and you're running a good, healthy business, you should expect profits somewhere in the range of fucking 15 to 30 percent, right? Absolutely. So you find a middle ground on that and you tell these companies that provide these services in the public sphere, these are your limits. We know what this shit costs. We know what it costs to do business. You can charge this much more and run your fucking business, right? You can, you can and we'll give you tax breaks, yep. whatever the fuck else, but you're not going to charge individual Americans this much money. You can't. Absolutely. Because they, can, they clearly can't afford it. 83% of all privately fu- filed bankruptcies in America are because of this. So, Like, how do we not see that? It's the same with the gun debate. Yeah. 67% of all gun deaths are suicides. We're saying it's not a mental health issue. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, if so 67, true. again, not a plurality, but a majority of these gun deaths are by suicide. The majority of privately filed bankruptcies are by are because of uh, unpaid medical expenses. How do we not see that this is the fucking g- giant problem? But listen, don't don't ever let the facts run a good story. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Uh, here, okay, I got a question for you. So I, I see this popping up today. Is um, so China just told they were just speaking and just to all the troops and just told mm-hmm. them to hurry up and prepare for war. Right. Um, yeah, I saw that. With Taiwan. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, what, what do you, I mean, so when me and you become president and vice president, mm-hmm. what, do you, what do you think? I mean, I, I got my, I'll, I'll, I'll hold my opinion on it, but like when we talk about all these, you know, China, Russia, um, you know, you got the Middle East, right? Like, which is a whole, um, I mean, what, what do you think, what do you think we should do on that? I mean, look, the, the real power that America has now is not necessarily just military power. In the 80s, uh, we, we discovered that. We discovered that our military power, yes, was amazing, but that there's another muscle we can flex that other countries can't keep up with, and that's our economic power, our buying Absolutely. power, purchasing power specifically. Now, there are a lot of rich people in China, and that government in general has a lot of money, but there aren't as many consumers that spend as much money on, let's be frank, stupid bullshit as America does. The fact that our trade deficit yeah. has gone back up and we're buying more than we're fucking giving to China. That's a good thing, by the way, because the more we buy, the better we do usually. Um, we found that it wasn't rockets and bombs. It wasn't even micro wars. It wasn't fucking all the co- other Cold War shit we did that finally broke the back of Russia. It was outspending them. We spent more money on technology and shit like that. And actually, Trump has got a plan for that. It's the 5G network. He wants to militarize this plan and put nationwide 5G in in place. Now, there's a country that did that relatively recently, uh, 20 years ago or so. uh, South uh, Korea put broadband internet nationally funded all over their country. Their average download speed 20 years ago was 50 megabits per second. Now, you're lucky in a rural area in the U.S. to get that now. They had their entire country had it. Yeah. It's like the interstate highway system, the railroads. You build infrastructure. That is what the federal government is supposed to yes. do. Like we, we see a, a, a burgeoning trend in, in technology or transportation or whatever it is. We tell the taxpayer like, hey, we're going to need this in 10 years. We're going to use half your money and half private money to build this shit. Uh, and blah, blah, blah. And that's just how it works. It's worked with the railroad, worked with the interstate highway system. Uh, Tesla tried to do it a couple of years ago. They wanted to put a honeycomb pattern all over the U.S. of, uh, this is 2013, I think, 14 maybe. They wanted to put a honeycomb pattern of car charging stations all over the U.S. And Tesla, Musk was going to pay for half of it himself. And the federal government pays the other half. Like this company was offering to pay half, $22 billion they were going to pay over 10 years. And the U.S. government was going to pay $22 billion and liberals shut it down. Why would we help this private company? You're not. You're partnering with them. Yeah. You stupid fuck. Yeah. Like, and, 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 and the way that, the way that when, when you're looking at contracts, when you're looking at, at these partnerships, like when, it, when you're working with the government, which is under like SAM.gov, right? Yeah. Um, that's the way it's wrote. It's supposed to be a partnership. Yeah. But I'm telling you, like... It's, it's just it's just insane it's just insane at, at where the accountability falls in this but it's so hard to follow who's accountable when it's like when they're talking to you it's it's like they're moving their hands right like it's always like it's magician's there, pattern magici- yeah. yeah it's just insane yeah. to try to find who is accountable and all mm-hmm. this shit because both sides are just so messed up man yeah and that's why we do this again it's not about starting a new political party it's not about having a bunch of um 
necessarily unique. I, like I, I do think we do have a lot of unique ideas on how to deal with this shit, but, uh, and, and that's a good thing, but I don't, it's not, that's not necessarily what I'm personally trying to bring to the table. What I'm trying to bring to the table is more questions and answers. Like, Hey, what do we really, this thing that we say we know, do we really know this thing? Are we just saying we know it because we've always said that that's a yeah. big fucking distinction to make. And if we don't really know it, what are we doing to know? That's yeah. what I want to know. What are we doing to know for sure what we're doing is correct? I don't give a fuck about your political yeah, how party. Are we, how are we tracking? Your talking points. How are we tracking how effective we are, right? There is no tracking There's habits. None. All it is is either you, you think that's the on, that's right, on purpose. The right <laughs> media or the much larger left media, let's be real about that, uh, criticizes the, the current or last administration. That's that's our that's our definition of analysis. Now there are places like Pew Research and uh, uh, there's, a, there's a tons of research going on. I haven't seen a whole lot of it that isn't politicized, to be honest. Uh, and the fact that we've allowed politics to intrude on economics and science at this point, e economics is not a fucking partisan issue. There is a best way to govern this country specifically. Now, we don't know it yet because we haven't tried anything. We've only tried to fight each other all Absolutely. the time. Uh, but there's a best way to govern all this. I think it's probably something like what we're talking about where you pay taxes at the lowest possible level and the federal government takes responsibility only for what it's supposed to take responsibility for. I think that's the way this country was founded, as a matter of fact. That's why the 10th Amendment to the Constitution exists. So the framers knew this. We immediately jettisoned that idea. And why, if somebody says, frankly, if you're working a job and somebody says, oh, no, I got that. And you're like, uh, no, I'm doing it. Why, why do you say that? Pride of authorship, but mostly it's about ego, ego and power. Yep, ego that's and all power. it is. And we don't. There is no room for ego and power in politics. That's why there should be absolute term limits. Uh, the one thing the Democrats have proposed recently that I like is an 18-year term limit on Supreme Court justices. I absolutely agree with that. 18 years is fucking enough. But why can they put a term limit on them, but not on on? Oh, they should do both. I yeah. think that nobody should be able to serve in the federal government for longer than 12 years if you're an elected official, in my opinion. Well. Here's what I tell you will last longer than 12 years because they have a 20-year warranty. It's ghostbeds.com. Mm. Oh, Are you think? making fun of Ross again? Yeah, I'm making fun of Ross again. Sorry. Yeah, so uh, we got to take a little bit of time out from all this uh, to get back on something that we do know works, something that will last longer than a 12-year turn limit. And that's Yeah, they, they have a 25-year Warranty on their fucking mattresses. Twenty year. Twenty year warranty. That's 20 ridiculous. Twenty year warranty on each mattress. Mat mattress. Mattress. It's made in the USA, and also what's pretty cool is is it, you can try it out for 101 nights, and if you don't like it, just send it back. Yeah, I mean, I would just as a goof maybe get buy one get weird as fuck on it and then send it back. Maybe I don't know. Just. Like yeah. maybe maybe have like a chalk outline of a body on there or something, and then send it back to them, and then buy a new one to make up like because you'll you'll want to keep the bed, but yeah. still maybe fuck with them a little bit. Just but fuck it's with them a bit. they yeah. if you're if you're out there listening to us, uh, there's a decent chance you're either military first responder or something like that, a teacher or a nurse, uh, anything you're, like uh, that. You're or, what, we, or, uh, what we like to call um, essential. essential. Yeah. Uh, you're one of those, or somebody in your family is, more than likely. And yeah. uh, those people get, what, 30% off for life. Yeah, 30% off for life, military first responder, government teachers. Yeah. You can find oh, yeah. us on government the footer place, of yeah. Drinking Bros page. So it's ghostbed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. We need to get them to make one for the American Party podcast. Yeah, they will. I'll have um, them do it. 101 nights, goes bed is cooling technology. So if you're like me and Dan and we get hot at night because we're, we're – uh, yeah, doing like hot stuff. I'm um, sweating right now just sitting here. So yeah, it doesn't, doesn't require any activity for me to sweat. Um, for everyone else, 25% off on everything. 25% off. Two free pillows, which also have uh, cooling technology. 30% off on any bundles. Ghostbed.com slash bundles forward slash. Um, so make sure to go check them out at ghostbed.com. Also, what's really cool is you can buy mattresses. I think it's like. Like, because they got financing, 0% down, 0% yeah, financing. I can't remember who the financier is, but it's 36 months pay-as-you-go plan with no Yeah, it's no, like 35 no bucks usury. a month. No usury. Like, there's yeah. no interest for the first 36 months, and you pay. I think if you buy, like, a, if you buy a queen, I think it comes out to, like, 18. If you buy a king, it's, like, 30, it's like 35, 30 35 something. bucks a month, yeah. Yeah. Go check them out at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. And I can tell you this. It's the one thing I'm going to go ahead and promise 
the people out there who are following the American Party that when me and you are elected, America and the White House mm-hmm. will have ghost beds in it. Oh yeah, the for White sure. House will will have ghost beds in it. And when and we the, the naval uh, the naval observatory as well, where the VP lives. Absolutely, Every, all of it. Air Force One will be nothing but ghost beds. Yep. No chairs. Just no, ghost beds. Just everywhere. ghost beds everywhere. Like if you want to, when we're president, you're gonna have to lie down on your side with yep. your hands on your cheek like this yep. to talk. I, that's the only way I'll take meetings. The only way. I think it's appropriate, frankly. I, 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 and if you got a problem with that, it sounds like it's your problem, not mine. Yeah. I'm the goddamn president, dude. Yeah. What are you <laughs> thinking? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to lie down and have my meetings. I'm tired. It's been a long day. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. If I'm not working, if I'm not working hard enough for the people mm-hmm. of America to where when I take meetings that I have to lay down. Yeah. That's the only time I'm going to rest is when I'm taking meetings. Yeah. Because after that, when that meeting's over, I'm back hard at work for the American people. Yeah, we'll do a, uh, we'll play our new intro song and do a video of us rolling up our sleeves to show people how hard we work. Yeah. And then maybe we'll dig some holes in the ground oh. with a hard hat on or something. That's it. Whatever. We should start making uh, spoofs of all the dumbass political, because it's, it's the same five commercials every single year. We should. Just with different people. It's the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. We should. We absolutely yeah. should. Because look, this is all a joke. I actually just all made, these people. well, not us running, but listen, no, I mean, not like, us running for president. American Vice politics president. is yeah, a American fucking joke right now. American politics is a joke until yeah. we show up. Yeah. So I, I do feel like what we should do is, is we should get the American Party podcast website up to see how many people are supporting the American party. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we should, we should go ahead and get that set up because after this election's over, um, you know, they got four years and then, I mean, we, we're, we're, we're getting after it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be after it within three years actually, because we'll start, we'll start running in uh 23 you think, sometime in the summer, yeah, fall, summer, area. fall 23. Yep. Um, and we're just going to stay on the road. Yeah. I mean, if we're allowed to on the road anymore, I don't know what, I don't know what life's going to look like then, but we'll see. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's not a big deal because life is going to look good because we've got four more years of this craziness. Yeah. And then, and then we're going to take over. We've got about we got eight years up there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're going to be able to get America back on track. Yeah, I think uh, I think honestly, the first big step that everybody needs to do is just take a step back and really take a look around at what's going on. Let me know if you think one of these sides has it all figured out and tell me why you believe that. And yeah. I'll, I'll challenge you on every single one of those things because I've thought about nothing else for the last 15 years. Well, I think, I think, I think what we as the American party are doing is we are starting the conversation. Yeah. We're starting the conversation to, to figure out how to get us back to great. Well, I mean, it's, you know, we definitely have the capability. We do. We do. So, well, I appreciate everybody tuning in. This is, what is this, the third or fourth? Uh, who knows, dude? Who knows, yeah. It doesn't know. even matter. It's a third. Yeah, third third American Party Podcast. We really appreciate it. I think we got to start getting some Q&As going on this thing. Yeah, for sure, right? yeah. It's going to be badass. Yeah. Maybe we'll get some people to start writing in of, you know, topics that they want. Maybe. Uh, what, what's important to them. Um but I think with the American Party that we are starting, we're going to keep our finger on the pulse and be able to, to stay in tune with what the American people need. We're definitely going to try real hard. I mean, look, yeah, I say this a lot, but you absolutely have to be, be willing to express your true ideas in public and allow people to react to them and in intentions. public. And intentions, sure. And you have to be, people need to respond to those in public and you need to have that conversation in public and you as an individual need to be able to admit when you're wrong, change your position, but also the other side needs to be able to allow you to do that without lighting your ass on fire. If the government is so transparent and the media thinks that the, that the world, that the government needs to be so transparent, let me ask you this. Mm. Why are there any behind closed doors conversations? I mean, look, there's obviously classified shit. Oh, obviously. Like if it has to put America at risk. security, then that's security. a different thing. Maybe but, what we do is... Maybe what we do is, is that every meeting that we have, it's broadcasted live. Yeah, I think that would be a good thing. I mean, look. Uh, Why not? Kings for years have held court, open court. Why not? And people come to them and talk to them with a room full of fucking people. Like I think I, we do it. What, what, what's the per- some, some stuff, 
uh, might be embarrassing. But I think we put too much weight on the idea that something personal about your life should be embarrassing. Why yeah. would you be humiliated, for example? Now, I know there's a lot of shame attached to things like physical and sexual abuse, particularly when you're Absolutely. younger. There's a lot of shame attached to that. But we have to get, we have to get by that thinking. You can't allow that to control the rest of your life. The same way that a veteran can't allow uh, post-traumatic stress or traumatic brain injury or any other issues they deal with to control their life. The only way to not do that is to openly talk about it, right? And that's got to be normalized. We can't fucking have this premise that, well, it's okay for them not to talk about that because it's embarrassing. Fuck that. Yep. Dude, you have a responsibility to yourself to say exactly how you're feeling 100%. for two reasons. One, because maybe what you're saying is going to help somebody else. And two, maybe you're wrong. And then you find out in that conversation that you're wrong. And then you're right from then on. Because that's how being right works. Everybody's yep. wrong until they're right. You have to figure it out. Then you become out. right. Yeah. It's unacceptable to just assume that you know what you're talking about all your life. That is unac- that's an unacceptable way to go through life. It's unacceptable. I don't, I don't like it. And it's, it's what happens when you pin yourself into one of these political parties. Absolutely. Like you, you become destined to have to defend the Republicans or the Democrats forever. Yeah, forever. And why? And, like and how does that help anybody, you or your country? How does that help anybody? It, it doesn't. doesn't. It doesn't. Well, man, listen, it's been another great episode. Yeah. Appreciate everybody listening.